We're gonna take this one step at a time. So let's talk about the easy stuff and we'll get to harder stuff. So vertical lines, casting shadows on horizontal surfaces. I think I'll do this, um, have, try to have some kind of organization to this and we'll talk about shadows on horizontal surfaces first and do vertical lines, horizontal lines, um, angled lines, curved lines. I think we'll do just the, like basic theory and then um, just with simple one dimensional lines and then we could apply that to an actual situation. So, and, and we're gonna do a uh, parallel. So the, the sun, as we said with the last video, the light angle from the sun, the sun is along this line, 90 degrees from where the viewer is looking and the rays of light are coming parallel to the, surf, to the surface of the picture plane. So they're gonna have no vanishing points. I get this every once in a while, you know, like, well, like think about light bulb. So you have this light bulb and the rays of light are coming like this, radiating around that light bulb. And then the thought is like, well, th these are not parallel with each other, the ray of light coming from a light bulb. And the sun is like the same thing. It's, you know, the rays of light are going like this around the sun and those aren't parallel so why is the ray of light parallel to the picture plane like each ray of light would be a different angle because it's coming out you know like like this it would, these these are not parallel with each other and how come if the light is coming from the sun it's considered parallel with each other so it is because of this here is the sun Here's Earth, roughly to scale drawing. So the rays of light coming to this planet are basically parallel with each other for all practical purposes. This is just so huge compared to you know, the size of Earth. Here is horizon line. And here's a vertical line. We'll just make it a little stick. So you have two choices with the parallel. When the sun's directly to your left or right, then uh, the shadows are going to be going parallel to the horizon line. We'll be going to the right, they'll be going to the left. You got those two choices, that's it. And the shadow is going to be parallel, the thickness of the shadow. So this is the ground line. It's a hard thing to define in that last video, exactly what it is. In this case, it's the shadow. So the ground line is the shadow. If you are casting the sh a vertical line, on a horizontal surface, the shadow of that line will be the same angle as the ground line. So the light angle is whatever you want it to be because the sun can be any place in the sky. But when you pick that angle, you have to like it because you are stuck with that angle for everything else in your drawing. So if I do this, The ground line comes from the bottom of, of the line and the light angle comes from the top of the line that you're casting a shadow from. You do this and now the sun, this is 30. So this is the, the light angle is at a 30 degree angle to the ground plane and the sun is 30 degrees above the horizon line, 90 degrees from where you're looking. So you can't really put it on your paper, you can't really show it, but the angle of light coming to the ground is 30 degrees, the sun's 30 degrees above horizon line. So if you want it like a high noon, then the sun would be 90 degrees from the ground plane. 
and the, the, the angle of light would be 90 degrees from the ground plane. And your light angle would be going straight down like that, which creates an interesting situation of the very top of this stick being the light rays hitting it directly. And the side of the, the stick is not really in light because the light rays are parallel to it. And it's not really in shadow either. It's in this weird um, in-between state of being like almost in shadow and almost in light. So, so that is, that's basically, uh, that, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Let's, well, let's do one more. We'll um, put a stick that is up in the air. Here's a vertical line that's floating in the air. I just made that up, so I have absolutely no idea how far above the ground it is. See, that's the thing you need to know when doing shadows. You can't just like make stuff up in your drawing and then plot shadows for, for it if you don't know where they are in space, especially like things in the air specifically. Like if you draw things on the ground, you know where they're setting on the ground. But something that's up in the air, like you need to know how far it is above the ground. Let's just make that up and there it is. So the stick is floating this far above the surface of the earth. So now we know where ground is and then we can cast like a ground line. There's a ground line. And now we'll put a light angle and we, it has to be the same, this 30 degrees. You can't change it now that the sun's in that spot. So here's 30. There's light angle from the bottom of the stick and a light angle from the top of the stick. We need to address the thickness of this thing at some point too. I'm just making it up. And if this was a cylinder, we probably need to address that also, that little curve, what that would be. But right now we're just doing vertical lines. So there, that's it. So uh, I don't know, much else to say about vertical lines on horizontal surfaces, but the rule is that the shadow of vertical lines on a horizontal surface is this, the shadow is the same angle as the ground line. So that's not the case with other types of lines, but just with vertical lines. All right, well, that, that's it. So um, horizontal lines next.